Hello drone pilots, my name is Alan and I'm here today with UAV Coach and Drone Pilot Ground School to talk about the FAA's drone certification exam, specifically to walk through five of the most challenging FAA airspace questions. Now, why am I shooting this video? Well, for those of you thinking about the drone certification process, this video will show you what some of the harder airspace questions look like, but also our methodology of teaching these concepts in our self-paced test prep course over at dronepilotgroundschool.com. And by choosing these super hard questions, I'm not trying to scare you away. The reality is that most folks going through this process have no traditional aviation or drone experience. And we've designed our test prep lessons in a way that is very much for beginners. Most of what you're being tested on is relatively straightforward. But we always like to be upfront with folks about what kind of trickery the FAA has up their sleeve when writing test questions. So I'm shooting this video for those of you thinking about going through this process. I'm also shooting this video for those of you who have already passed your FAA exam. Let's see what you still remember, Mr. or Mrs. Smarty Pants. As I go through each of these questions, pause the video, see if you can work to get the right answer to each question as we go through it. Okay, I'm gonna get behind the computer uh, and share my screen and we'll jump right in. All right, folks, I am behind the computer. And before I get into this first question, I just wanted to acknowledge what we're looking at. <laughs> we're looking at what's called a sectional chart. And during your FAA exam, you'll be given a test supplement. It's a, um, it's a book and it's about 100 pages. Um, it's filled with maps uh, like this, as well as a lot of other uh, really interesting information. And many of the questions in the FAA's database of test questions uh, map specifically to one of these charts. And in this case, uh, we've got five questions we're going through in this video. Uh, we're gonna be looking at three of the charts. So figure 20, figure 25, and I believe figure 78. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna zoom in uh, to make it a little bit easier to see. There's a lot going on in these charts. And uh, let's just hop into question one. So refer to figure 20, area one. And area one is gonna be this red circle here. We can see down here is area three, uh, up here is area six. So let's zoom into area one. You're hired to inspect a group of structures that are under construction nine statute miles south of Norfolk International Airport. What's the highest you're allowed to fly if inspecting the topmost part of the tower? So there's a, this is a multifaceted question. The first thing we have to do is to find Norfolk International Airport. And this icon right here represents uh, the, the middle of the airport. And um, in this case, it's pretty easy. We've got a class Charlie Airport. There, there's so much to teach here. Uh, I think in the scope of this YouTube video, I'm just gonna focus on the specific question. But if you're confused about any of this stuff, just know that there, you're learning a lot more as you're going through this test prep process. And again, we are looking at the most challenging questions that aren't gonna show up until you're you know, two thirds of the way or three fourths of the way through um, our course anyway. So we found the airport icon and we've gotta go nine statute miles south. How do we know how far statute miles are? Well, the FAA gives us a nice little reference right here. We're gonna look at this middle row and that is about 10 statute miles. So let's eyeball it. Let's go down about nine statute miles. So somewhere around here, we are looking for a group of structures that are under construction. Now, this group icon here, this is a group icon. This is a single icon, the single pyramid and this kind of double pyramid. So group of structures would be this icon and under construction, you see uh, is right underneath the icon. So we're looking at these, uh, at this group of obstructions. Now, correctly identifying towers, um, heights, uh, under construction, all this stuff that I just gone over, it's challenging. It can be confusing due to the amount of information printed on some of the charts. And the placement of information doesn't always appear in the same exact way relative to the, the different icons. So I just wanted to acknowledge that when you're going through a course like ours, you're going through dozens and dozens of these practice questions, you're gonna get a much better feel uh, for that. So we've identified the towers. How high are we allowed to fly if inspecting the topmost part of the tower? So the first thing to understand is these two numbers here, they represent the topmost part of, uh, of, of the tower. And when I say tower, we're talking about a group of obstructions. So let's, you know, maybe there's two buildings or three buildings or four utility towers or something, but the top, like the highest one, the topmost part of that is gonna be 470 feet MSL or mean sea level or 453 feet AGL or above ground level. 
Um, so both of these altitudes represent the, the highest point of this group of structures. We're being asked, how high are we allowed to fly? Now, you might think to yourself, we're only allowed to fly up to the tallest part of the tower, maybe only up to 400 feet, because under the Part 107 regulations, drone pilots can only fly up to 400 feet AGL. However, this, this question is tricky because it's addressing a nuance of this max altitude rule. If you are within 400 feet of a tower or obstruction, like what we're talking about, you can even fly up to 400 feet over the topmost part of that tower uh, for, for inspection purposes. So we're taking these altitudes and we're adding 400 feet. And that's the highest that we're allowed to fly under the Part 107 regulations. So there could actually be two correct answers here. It could be 470 feet MSL plus 400 feet or 870 feet MSL could be a correct answer or 453 feet AGL plus 400 feet or 853 feet AGL. And the correct answer choice is B, 853 feet AGL. Um, so a little tricky. Uh, again, a multifaceted question where you have to, number one, kind of find the tower, uh, you know, find the airport and then find the uh, towers. We have to go back to the question, reread it a couple of times to make sure we're really understanding is it a, is it a single tower they're looking for or a group of obstructions. Uh, we know they're under construction, so it's going to be this one. Um, so anyways, a very classic, classically difficult, tricky airspace question. Um, let's look at question number two. Um, we are looking at figure 25. Um, this is uh, by far the most challenging uh, figure in, in all the land, in, 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 all, of the, in all the figures. Um, so I always pay special tribute to figure 25 when I'm going through it in our, in our course because it's just a doozy. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, we're looking at it right side up. I'm going to rotate it so we're able to read it here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, question two, refer to figure 25, area three. So where is area three? Okay, it's down here. Let's zoom in a little bit just to make our eyes, give our eyes uh, an advantage here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Refer to figure 25, area three. If Dallas Executive or RBD tower is not in operation, which frequency should be used as a common traffic advisory frequency or CTAF to monitor airport traffic? Um, the first thing we need to do, folks, is to find Dallas Executive or RBD Airport. And it looks like we've got the text here, Dallas Executive RBD. And all of this information here is for this airport. And it refers to this icon right here. Um, so um, what is the CTAF frequency? What, is, um, what does the FAA mean when they say CTAF? It's available at busier airports and it's used by manned aircraft pilots. So not by drone pilots, but by manned aircraft pilots to uh, self-announce their location as they arrive or depart the airport when the tower is not operational. Um, drone pilots can carry uh, uh, a radio and tune into the CTAF frequency. You can hear some of this chatter to, to kind of understand um, what's, what's going on uh, with, with manned aviation. Um, but I just wanted to set a little bit of context around a lot of the radio frequencies and a lot of the airspace stuff uh, that we're learning as we're going through this process. The, the infrastructure is set up for manned aircraft pilots, but because we are drone pilots, we have to learn to integrate into the existing national airspace system. Uh, we're being asked to learn a lot of this stuff. So uh, when we look at the three answer choices, they map to these three uh, frequencies here, 127.25, 126.35, and 122.95. So what frequency is the correct answer? Um, the good news is that in that test supplement book I was telling you about, one of the first few pages is a chart legend, and it shows you a lot of helpful information to where you don't have to memorize um, all of the info in, in something like this. Um, so when the tower is closed, a pilot's going to tune into the CTAF. So we're looking for the CTAF frequency. And it's just a general rule of thumb that anytime you see a C icon like this, the frequency to the left of that icon is the CTAF frequency. In this case, it's also the control tower frequency, um, but it's also the CTAF frequency. So the, the correct answer is 127.25. And I know I'm, I'm skipping through a ton of like explanations and, and you know, what is control tower frequency? What is ADIS frequency? Um, but, but in the spirit of uh, time and, and trying to stay somewhat focused, <laughs> I will uh, continue on 
to the next question, but just trying to give you representation of the kinds of things you're gonna be uh, learning as you're going through this process. Question three, uh, also refer to figure 25, area eight. Uh, so we're in the same spot here. What airspace would you be operating in if flying at the maximum allowable altitude while inspecting the towers nine statute miles southwest of Dallas Executive Airport? Awesome, so we're actually looking at the same airport here. So we're gonna start at the icon here. We're gonna go nine statute miles southwest. You can look at my mouse. And we're probably looking at these icons right here. And how do we know how tall these icons are? Well, we see, um, we see 2549 and we see 1731. These are the closest altitude numbers uh, to, to this uh, uh, icon, uh, the, the towers, the towers icon. Okay, so the question here is, again, asking us about maximum allowable altitude. And um, first, let's determine what that altitude is, and then we can kind of figure out, well, what airspace are we in? Well, the maximum allowable altitude is going to be this 2549 MSL plus 400 feet, or 2949 MSL. Um, it could also be, if we're in AGL, again, it could be 1731 feet AGL plus 400, so 2131 feet AGL. So we've got the MSL height and the AGL height. So that's what the maximum allowable altitude is. Now the question is, are we in controlled airspace? Uh, and what, what, what airspace class are we in? Uh, there's no class D, um, th these, these uh, blue dotted uh, da dash lines here are class D. There's no class D right here, but we can see this, um, this blue class B, and we can see that uh, there's, a, there's a fraction here that says 110 over 30, and what that means is that in this closed off part of the, the blue uh, class B airspace, that class B starts at 3,000 feet MSL and it goes up to 11,000 feet MSL. So it starts at 3,000 feet MSL, but we're at, remember, we're at 2,949 feet MSL if we're flying at that maximum allowable altitude. So we're not quite in class B. So class B is not gonna be the right answer. Um, and remember, if we're coming up from the surface, unless it's otherwise marked, you have class G, uncontrolled airspace, going up to either 700 feet AGL or 1,200 feet AGL. So then you have class E, controlled airspace. So um, again, there's a lot of nuances here. Um, if, if for those of you who have, who have gone through the, the test prep process, passed your FA exam, I'm curious if you remember this question. Um, it may have shown up on your test. But the correct answer is class E. So uh, one way to think about it is that we're starting at the ground level. Um, we go up, it's class G at the ground level, goes up to either 700 feet or 1200 feet. It doesn't really matter. If we zoom out, it's actually 700 feet because this whole area is enveloped in this uh, thick magenta fuzzy circle, but it doesn't really matter for this question. And it's going to be class E up to 3000 feet MSL when it changes over to uh, class B. So if we are flying at the maximum allowable altitude over this group of towers, we are going to be in class E. And if we fly a little bit higher, uh, we would be in class B. Cool, but we wouldn't actually be allowed to, to fly higher unless we had additional like special uh, waiver for that. So again, very tricky question. Um, I, I hope this is helpful. I hope this gives you a sense of how we teach this stuff. Um, let's go to question four. This will be a little bit easier. Um, so question four, refer to figure 78. And you can see there's no areas on this figure. This question was actually on my exam and I really struggled, or some variation of this question was on my exam on, on this chart, and I struggled to find the specific airport or city that the question referenced. So I actually spent like three or four minutes looking for it. So I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna show you where it is, uh, but we are trying to identify the airspace over Onawa Airport, uh, K36. So where is Onawa? It's actually right here. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna scroll down and look right at it. Onawa. So identify the airspace over Onawa Airport. If you were a drone pilot, could you fly around here? This airport sits in class G airspace, so uncontrolled class G airspace. The thing to remember in this question, um, while the airport sits in class G airspace, how high does that class G airspace go up to? When does it turn into class E airspace? Unless it's otherwise marked, it's going to turn into class E at 1200 feet AGL. Um, so there's no 
class of airspace being indicated around this airport. So we are in class G. So the correct answer is, uh, is, is class G. Now the challenge is that uh, all three answers have class G. So this is kind of a definition style question. We just have to know the definition of class G. And um, in this case, it's going to start at the service and uh, go up to um, uh, 1,200 feet. And then it's class E from 1,200 feet up to but not including uh, 18,000 feet MSL. So, um, you know, in, in these thick magenta fuzzy areas, this is class E transition. So if, uh, if Onawa was here, like where this 2, uh, 4 is, then it would be class G up to 700 feet AGL. And then it uh, changes to class E. Um, so that's just kind of a definition of the airspace and the stuff you'll have to uh, work your way through. So that's, uh, that's question four, a little simpler than the last one, but still we have to identify where the airport icon is and situationally what's going on in this class G airspace versus this class G airspace. Uh, if we're flying um, you know, a drone a few feet, feet off the ground, there's a difference between flying here and flying here. When we look at the definition of you know, does class G, when does it stop? Does it stop at 700 feet? Does it stop at 1200 feet? When does class E start? Um, so this idea of airspace classes stacking on top of each other can be confusing. Um, we have a lot of visuals. We have a lot of like motion graphics and stuff in our course that help better, better explain. Um, okay, question five. We are back to our beloved uh, figure 25 and we're looking at area four. So let me zoom out a little bit. Where is area four? Over here. Okay, let's move over here. See if I can zoom in once more. There we go. Refer to figure 25, area four. What is the floor of class B airspace at Fort Worth Alliance or AFW airport? All right, first let's find Fort Worth Alliance. Fort Worth Alliance right here, AFW. And all this information here, we can see the control tower frequency, the ATIS frequency, uh, the length of the runway. Um, this is the airport icon. And we can see this blue demarcation, this blue bold line, that's class B airspace line. So this airport sits in this part of uh, the, the class B airspace. So what's the floor of that class B airspace? Um, in this closed off part of class B airspace, when we look, uh, we have to actually go down, 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 down. We can look down here, this 110 over 40. So this fraction here represents like in this closed off part of class B airspace. And again, we're looking at this right here. So that 110 over 40, the floor is gonna be 400 feet and the ceiling is gonna be 11,000 feet uh, MSL. So the correct answer is 4,000 feet MSL. It's just really learning how to identify uh, the fractions. Um, and again, figure 25 makes this super challenging. A lot of the other questions are a lot easier. Uh, than, than this, but that's why the floor of class B uh, is in this case 4,000 feet MSL because of what that fraction uh, says. Here you can see it's 6,000 feet. Here you can see it's 3,000 feet. Um, here is 2,000 feet. So you know you move away further away from the airport, the floor of class B rises. It's like an upside down wedding cake. Uh, that's another way to visualize uh, an airport like this. All right, folks, I'm going to hop back out from behind the computer. Okay, I hope that wasn't too painful. If you have any questions about these explanations or about the FAA certification process, let us know in the comments below. Blue skies and safe flying out there.